Hi everyone, my name is Chloe and today I'm going to be making a video about hip hop culture and its treatment of black women, specifically focusing on American hip hop, but also black British grime music. So from the jump, I just want to acknowledge that I am a light skinned black woman. I'm able bodied, I'm cis, I'm heterosexual. I navigate the world in a way that I'm able to because of the privileges that I have, especially when it comes to the music industry. My role is to present and to sort of challenge, uh, you know, the powers that be and the power dynamics that we always see at play. Black women are treated in a particular way, right? Because of our status, because of our social position and in result of our blackness and our being black women, trans or cis. It's very important that we acknowledge that there's a social position that we are in and, and how our different privileges or our different experiences can mean that we are less likely to advance in certain industries. So often light-skinned black women play into this hierarchy, right, in order to benefit themselves. There's a similar thing going on with cishet black men also. How can they profit from a patriarchal capitalist order, which they are aware of and choose to ignore the inequality, specifically when it comes to black female rappers? Charlemagne the God is a 42 year old radio American personality and he has been able to build his career using homophobia, transphobia, colorism, sexism, the list goes on. He demonstrates that punching downwards is a way for many cishet black men to progress in their career. Blackness is profitable when it is marketed in a specific way, especially in hip hop culture. His ability to create drama or clicks and therefore money in the radio interview space has often involved self-interest, which is why there is so much criticism around him, DJ Envy and Angela Yee. We have the radio interview that Charlemagne had with Jocelyn Hernandez when he calls her a man. Oh shit, you got the areola. I, I had to flash him. Wait, what is the top? Let me see the top of this. What is this? Jocelyn, oh my I ain't gonna lie, you done glowed up over the years, man, because you used to look like a man and now you done softened up a lot. I'm gonna kick your ass. I'm serious though. Like, kick his you... ass like a man with. <laughs> These kind of gendered insults are often used to showcase that black women aren't real women almost, but. Once again, I want to emphasize the importance of what is a woman, especially when we're coming to a conversation around transness and trans identity. Society's definition of what is or isn't a woman cannot be separated from colonialism. White supremacist ideals around gender identity, gender, gender performance are very binary and largely shaped in this context by white womanhood, by cishet white womanhood. Anyone who exists outside of this default is treated in a specific way for their failure to live up to those expectations. Would Charlemagne say this to a white woman? No. We then have the interview with black Afro-Latino singer Amara Negra, where she's talking about her experiences and really the crossover that she's having from, um, I think she's from the Dominican Republic to America, right? And she talks about colorism, she's talking about her experience. And Charlemagne directly undercuts her and undermines her experience. The struggle is, um, I think it's almost, it's, it's very similar. Obviously, they'll always pick up, they'll always pick the lighter, mm -hmm. you know, they'll always pick the ones that look like I said before, like JLo's and Shakira's and stuff before they look at us. Who cares if you're talented? Who cares if you're educated? You know, you're always going to be the last option. And that's that just so it's crazy just a symbol to me, of beauty. I don't, I don't it's... see that. Like, I mean, yes. And I'm, I guess I'm uptown a lot. I'm in New York. But you I don't mean, see it where? I don't even see it I in mean, Hollywood no more. I feel like that. I feel like times have. Charlemagne was dedicated to undermine her, to dedicated to make her look as if she did had no credibility. And also have the situation with Janet Mock. The list goes on with Charlemagne the God. In this situation, he uses Little Duval. Uh, as an opportunity to once again disrespect trans women. So much, I had sex and she said, Duval. <laughs> this might sound messed up I'm and I don't care. 
She dying. I, I can't deal with no. that. With no, Janet, that's a hate no, crime. I can't, I, I can't do When Janet Mock was here, she said she tells all her partners. She didn't tell the first one. Who? Janet Mock. She's Who is a, that? A transgender activist. Oh, beautiful, I didn't know that. Beautiful person. It already happened to you. All right, put that damn book. I mean. <laughs> man, tell me she ain't pretty. Come on now. I ain't, She's no. beautiful. That nigga doing his thing. <laughs> Rising rapper Megan Thee Stallion from Houston. Hot Girl Summer who was shot in the feet on a night out after attending a swimming pool party at Kylie Jenner's house on her way home. She was driving home with Lanes and friends. Weeks after, Megan broke her silence and said the following. I'll get out the car, I'm done arguing. I don't wanna argue no more. I'll get out. I'm walking away. This nigga from out the, from out the back seat of the car Start shooting me. You shot me. I ain't get cut by no glass, but let me tell you why they saying that. When the when the when the police came, because the, the neighbors called the police, this did not happen at Kylie House. This happened damn near back at the house I was staying at. I was just trying to get home. We was five minutes away from my spot. The police come. I'm scared. All this shit going on with the police. The police is, is shooting motherfuckers for anything. The police was literally killing black people for no motherfucking reason. Soon as the police tell us all get out the motherfucking car, the police is really aggressive. You think I'm about to tell the police that we niggas, us black people, got a gun in the car? Regardless of the pain, of the, of the clear violation and truth that you can see in this video, people are dedicated to believing that Megan is just making everything up. And one of the things that you can see in the conversation, in the dialogue, is that Megan is being described as manly. She's being described as a violator, as someone that is violent, that is aggressive, that because she's tall, because she's curvy, She's seen as someone that was aggressive towards Tory Lanez or must have done something to deserve it. And we know that if it was Kylie Jenner that had been shot, there was no way that this situation would be portrayed this way overwhelmingly by media or overwhelmingly by rappers. And the silence, the silence of Megan Thee Stallion's cis het male counterparts is so telling. And I think that it really reveals that black men, they, they choose to overlook that our experiences are not the same. And so often you'll hear this narrative, oh, black women are the issue with the relationship between black men and black women because they've refused to submit, because they're so, they have so much attitude problems, because they're so angry. Yet constantly, as I've showed you in these examples, we have every reason to be angry. This situation demonstrates why black women do not come forward around domestic violence. We are not seen as ideal victims. All of that plays a role in them spinning this, this narrative that she was the aggressor and that she deserved to experience violence and that people like 50 Cent were even comfortable making jokes. Moving on to black British grime culture. Black British grime artist Skepta posts up an image of Preeti Patel who is a conservative politician, most known for her anti-blackness, most known for her, you know, violent policies around immigration and how she plays into this idea of the good immigrant. We've seen the, the interview with Skepta and Naomi Campbell. We saw he doesn't want to talk about politics and there's no loyalty, there's no sense of community. What is so often a part of the black celebrity space is that failure to challenge mindsets and how when you look around the British grime culture space in who's idolized like as influencers or uh, celebrities they're all lighter skinned there's so many of these artists which you know which is obvious that they're benefiting from colorism but why, it's not a coincidence that everybody looks the same. What about Misha B? We saw Misha B's experiences earlier on uh, this year where she was talking about X Factor and how she felt extremely suicidal and the way that the show was using this angry black woman narrative against her. She would not have experienced this if she was lighter skinned. Likewise with Alexandra Burke. Likewise with Keisha from Sugar Babes. Their lighter skinned counterparts don't have the same musicality, 
don't have the same songwriting ability or talent, yet progress with an industry way smoother. That's how, this is how most of my questions are starting today. I heard a rumor that, look how nervous you are. My nerves get. That you turned down a lot of money to do, to not do, I should say, a Nicki Minaj diss. Oh, that, that yeah. Someone, someone in America, someone reputable, I heard. <laughs> that was the last, yeah, that was the, the first time I mentioned anything about, because that was the first time I got flew out to meet with a, a massive record label. It was just, I don't know, man. It was just weird. I got a weird vibe about the whole situation. Mm. The fact that you only want me to do a diss record. That's how you want to break me. You don't want to break me because of my talent. You don't yeah, want to break yeah. me because of how I sound and what my style's like. You just want me to take down another female rapper. How, it's, it's not a secret, innit? This is a male dominated <laughs> industry. It and is. you've already touched on the fact that it's London dominated as well. Yeah, so do yeah. you kind of, is it is it difficult? Like, yeah, it is definitely. It must like, be, man. Whoever says it isn't, they're lying in it. Cause it mm. is like, you have to overcompensate. Sometimes you don't feel welcome. Sometimes like, I just feel like you just, you definitely have to overcompensate hundred percent. And <clears throat> I feel like with some guys within the industry, I feel mm. like they subconsciously, do things or overlook you as a, as a female artist. There are so many talented artists out there that deserve a platform, that deserve attention. And this includes people like Saucy Santana and Candy who are black cis men, but they are black cis gay men and they experience so much homophobia. They also experience colorism, right? They're extremely talented, but there are those barriers there. And with Saucy Santana also his size, his him being a fat, dark skinned, gay man that plays a role too so please check out saucy santana and please check out candy's music we then have miss banks we have ray black we have misha b we have chica we have tiara whack we have carnage kills we have shay diamond just just comment below any awesome um dark skin uh black performers outside of dark skin cis het men below <laughs>